I think we should talk about some of the jump starts that have come out in uh, in the past month or so. Not not a ton since I think the last six that came out earlier in the year, but um, there there was another serialization round within Jump, and I kind of wanted to talk about those a little bit, albeit I don't have a ton to say about all of them, but you know. I, I still figured it'd be worth going over. Um, Sid, what, uh, what what's the first series we, we want to talk about here real quick? The first series we're going to talk about is Lycopene the Tomatoy Poodle. Or as I like to call him, the tomato Poodle. <laughs> <laughs> Both names are quite funny. Um, So it's it's essentially a gag manga about this girl who somehow finds herself in literally what she calls, like, a Lewis Carroll-esque Alice in Wonderland kind of world. I appreciated that. Um, and she finds a, a, a poodle that kind of looks like a tomato, and they get into a lot of weird, sort of, kind of dark, sometimes political humor, sometimes referential humor. It's really weird. I don't know how to feel about it, but I, I guess I thought it was funny. Yes, this manga comes from Koji Oshi, who previously ran Inomaru Daishi in Jump, and this is a very similar type of gag manga. It is very raunchy, surprisingly so, considering the cute art style. It is also fuel of meta humor and political humor, and I think that is partly why some audiences over here weren't too receptive of it, is because it is, like, so heavy with Japanese pop culture and political references that yeah. if it weren't for the translation notes, you wouldn't understand what the context of the joke is. So I imagine it was a difficult series to translate because of the difference in cultural context and the type of humor, but I enjoyed it a lot because of the dichotomy between the cutesiness of the art style and the uh, abrasiveness of the humor, <laughs> the unexpected raunchiness of uh, the jokes, and also some of the mean-spiritedness as well. Yeah, there's a good balance with the humor, I feel like, and... um yeah, I don't really have much else to say other than, yeah, I thought it was a, a nice, weird addition to to these jump starts. I enjoyed it a lot. It was probably never going to find an audience over here, but if it gets nope. made into, like, an anime, I would definitely watch it. Yeah, I, I could see this getting, like, a, like a, probably, like, three to ten minute episode per anime. It ends up on Crunchyroll. It maybe has, like, its its own little cult fan base within within a niche or something. It would be great for that format. It would, it would. But um, let's, let's, let's talk about the next one. The next series is Full Drive, which is a ping pong manga by Genki Ono. It follows this kid who is the grandson of this very skilled German table tennis player. And he's also really skilled. And he comes to Japan to compete in the Japanese Table Tennis League, meets the genius table tennis beauty named Marin, who he befriends by impressing her with his table tennis skills, and then he, they attend an academy for table tennis players. It's pretty straightforward as a shonen sports manga. I... Don't think that Dan is that interesting a protagonist. He, you know, is very much... Uh, shonen sports protagonist. I can't really hone in on anything specific that's interesting about him other than the fact that his main mentorship and relationship is with his grandfather, which is interesting, and that he was also kind of discriminated against for being short and also half Japanese and a German culture and whatever. Yeah, he's, like, he's, very, he's very passive about the way he's treated. Which they don't really I, go into yeah. that that deeply. I like Marin a lot more just for her personality and design, but like I don't know how much they were gonna do with her as the series goes forward. So this was definitely the weakest of the three in the last round to me. I definitely think you know it could get interesting, but as it stood in the first three chapters, my interest definitely waned as the three chapters went on. Yeah, this is definitely a series where I would wait to see how long it lasts in Jump, and then maybe jump into it once I know it past, like, the 50-chapter mark. 
Otherwise, it's not. It's not. It's not something I would start weekly right away. Like I kind of thought the art was interesting in a few pages. Some of the two page spreads in there I thought were really interesting and uh, and what not to look at. But other than that, yeah, like Sid said, it's very straightforward and it's not. It's not super interesting. But maybe it could be interesting later. Mm Mm-hmm. And then finally we have what was definitely the favorite of the last three jump starts, and that is Golem Hearts. It's by Genesuka, and it's definitely very well polished. I think the artwork is really strong, really expressive. Uh, It's basically about this golem kid who... You know, has sentience, which is odd among golems, not very normal. His creator is kind of a goof who isn't very good at his arcane magic. But, you know, he made a living golem, so that is impressive in of itself. And when it counts, you know, they both got good hearts and they can be capable of some cool things. Uh, it's a very funny manga because of the hijinks that uh, the main characters, Lemek and the Golem, get into. So, like that. Uh, it's not that. I, like, in terms of, like, the story, it's not, you know, that unusual. It's not, like, breaking any uh, barriers or, like, trends. But... It has such heart that it's pretty endearing. Like, the relationship between Noah and Lemek is really compelling within the first chapter. You really get behind it. And so when Noah has to depart from Lemek in the third chapter, you know, that's a pretty emotional scene. And it's very strong for... You know, a moment that's happening within the first three chapters. So the manga has done a great job with characterization and building up the relationship between Lamek and Noah. And yeah, I'm definitely interested in seeing how that progresses. We'll have to see like what the future lies in store for the series. But I think if any of these three series had the potential to become a breakout hit, Golem Hearts would be. Yeah, the the thing that kind of stood out to me about Golem Hearts was that, um, I don't know if I said this on Twitter or anywhere else yet, but uh, the art for Golem Hearts, uh, for me, is really reminiscent of that kind of Romance Dawn One Piece era of Jump. It, it, it looks like, it looks like early One Piece to me, or kind of, kind of that same sort of, um, aesthetic, I guess. Does that make any sense? It does. In terms of the relationship between Lemek and Noah, I actually got a lot of Zatch Bell vibes. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I actually, um, it, we, we were kind of talking about how, you know, as far as the story goes, it's it's not it's not doing anything that we haven't seen before. But like, you know, I I felt uh, while, while reading the first three chapters, I thought there were some elements of uh, of Chopper and Hero Look's relationship uh, from the Drum Island arc of One Piece. I thought there was some kind of some kind of parallels and elements of that in there that really kind of made me feel um, more attached and endeared to the characters. And like you were saying, like the relationship between Lemek and Noah felt very genuine, and I think it felt believable. Uh, and I definitely think that's probably the strongest point of the beginning of Golden Hearts so far. And yeah. I, I, this is, the, now this, this is a series I would start reading week to week from the beginning because it, it, it really has impressed me with how much I'm attached to these characters in such a short span of time. I think that's a very, uh, that's a very powerful skill that, uh, that this creator has. I agree. Comparing it with Hero Luck is definitely a great comparison, especially since Hero Luck and Lemmick are pretty similar in that they're both kind of screw ups, but, they have such good heart and are really inspiring to their, you know, little apprentices. Yeah, so I, I hope Golem Hearts becomes kind of another Kimetsu no Yaiba where it gets its jump start. It doesn't get picked up, but there's, you know, later on down the road, once, it, uh, you know, when it keeps going and going and jump, you know, there's more demand for it. And then Viz will be like, oh, man, we should really pick this up for a release, I guess. We'll have to see. Hopefully it finds its audience in Japan and it grows that audience enough to the point where we will consider licensing it. That would, that would be great. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just have to see what Japan thinks of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. 
But that about does it for our Jumpstart discussions. But we have two new Jumpstarts coming out next month, which I'm looking forward to as well. And I think we'll just uh, address them right now. So the new Jumpstart's coming out next month. will debut uh, in the 7th issue on January 15th, as well as in the 8th issue on January 22nd. First up, we've got Boza Beats, which is about a priest expelling demons. That kind of sub-genre. But it is going to be focused on a priest who has been raised by wolves. So kind of a wild card kind of spiritual guy. So that's pretty interesting in terms of like the the raised by wolves part. Obviously, this is a very popular genre of shonen battle manga, the supernatural fighting type. So whether this is necessarily distinct from the likes of the Gray Man or Blue Exorcist, we'll have to see. But uh, it could be promising. What I'm more interested in is. Welcome to the video department of Azagaya Fine Heart School. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to shorten that title. Well, the actual manga is actually called Act Age. Apparently that uh, was the name of a one-shot that the authors previously did. But this is done by a duo called uh, Tsuya Matsukita and Shiro Uzazaki. And I don't know if we have a certain premise that is, like, in-depth. The premise of the, you know, manga that's given by Synopsis is that it's about a certain young woman and a genius director who met at an audition for rookie actresses. So it is basically the similar kind of premise of the one-shot that they did, though uh, they've shortened the title considerably. (laughs) Made it a little more marketable. Yeah, I wonder if this will be, like... uh... If this will be about like you know like a like a film a film club or something maybe just about two kids who want to like make movies or something that'd be kind of neat. That's definitely what the premise leads me to believe. But yeah, I'm definitely interested in act age in particular. But I'm looking forward to seeing what both of these new jump starts will have to offer. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely talk about those at some point once I think they're both first chapters of those are out at least. Um, yeah, definitely definitely looking forward to. The former, but I think I think both of them are interesting enough. I think I'll, I'll read both. Mm-hmm. 